Ones to the sky in Philly. Then this one is for you, Mama Rhodes. People's elbow covered by the rock. Cody is screwed. And there it is. That is the finish of Cody Rhodes, Seth Rollins losing tonight. Bloodline rules. Bloodline rules are in effect for tomorrow night's match. Roman Reigns, Cody Rhodes for the Universal Undisputed Heavyweight Title. 40 minute match. Rock looked really good out there. Hey, worked for him to be in a tag team match tonight. And we got a good dose of Cody and Roman. So we we already know what we're going to get out of them tomorrow. But they didn't play up anything whatsoever that Seth Rollins, you know, went ahead and put himself completely on the line. He, you know, he decimated his knee. He went far and beyond. Like the whole proving ground of can you trust Seth Rollins to go in the fight with you to win? Well, he proved it. And somewhere down in storyline, I think Seth Rollins is going to be able to go and use that because of whatever happens tomorrow. Because the knee injury sets things up for tomorrow for when I think Damian Priest will come in and cash in Money in the Bank. I believe that's going to happen. And with that going on, I think you can just go ahead and look at what Cody and Seth do in their match. Obviously, I saw Drew McIntyre had a clip on X and he obviously was making some comments saying it's going to have to be the easiest payday of his life tomorrow because Seth, you know, looked like roadkill out there because he got tore up. And now Drew feels like he's destined to go ahead and win. Well, Whatever happens tomorrow, I don't think Drew wins the belt. I think Damien cashes in. Or at least we'll see a cash in from Damien, however that works out. And I think it would be to an injured Seth Rollins. And part of the thing for me is I think that, you know, remember we heard about Seth Rollins saying he was not medically cleared a while back when he didn't think we were going to have the match with him, but then he was. I mean, he's also held on to his title for 315 days. They could let it go and let him drop the belt. That could be the one thing they could do off this match tonight if they decide to do so. But, you know, I mean, there's a lot you could play to it down the line after. Like Cody and Seth, they're going to have to confront each other as to what happens here. The other thing we also saw was, was that Roman did spear the rock. And the rock being hit like as such, I mean... The way the end match ended, like everything was in harmony, but we could always look and see like what will happen. And, and the thing is, too, it was a trust factor as well that Roman allowed The Rock to get the pin on Cody. He got the tag in. He got to go ahead and finish the match. No screw up. So they didn't play into any possible betrayal on either side. I don't know. If they just wanted to go and leave us some crumbs just to kind of give us some doubt, maybe down the line, but we didn't get anything like that. And we don't know what it's going to look like tomorrow. If any of those consequences happen to where what Seth did, and here's the thing, where Seth could very well lose tomorrow, and by the time Cody and Roman go on, Seth could try to screw that over. So there's a lot of things that could happen. Like there's, there's, uh, there was always those two things that were building up in storyline throughout the last three months that you can get to, you can get to that part. But overall, Cody Roman, the tag team top main event tonight, WrestleMania Saturday, WrestleMania Forty, post game show here on the Wrestling Observer podcast. This was great, great match. Roman looked badass out there. I mean, let I me mean tell you. And when I look at the interests for everyone, you know. Cody, Seth coming out first, then seeing The Rock and that Brahma bull and fire engulfed around, that was cool as hell. Roman coming out to the fanfare he always gets, comes out, you know, and that's the thing where I feel like the way Roman Reigns is always presented anyway, it's always going to surpass, even though The Rock's entrance is fantastic. So they, they have presentation, the whole match, the whole 45, 50 hour long that they did of the match tonight, 
that is the real shining part of the entire night. But I can tell you right now that WrestleMania 40 should not be a two night show. It didn't have enough matches to make it a two night show. And this is the part where storylines matter. They needed to build more storylines into certain matches. So the other two matches that matter to me tonight, it would be Sammy and Gunther because we get the title change. I didn't expect that 666 days for Gunther. I wasn't expecting Gunther to lose. Not at all, but you know, they put the story here with Sammy Zayn. It was very quickly, hastily put together. So about a month storyline where we get the IC title match and then Sami Zayn and Gunther, we have to build this up where Gunther's not even really a, a, a part of this. As much as it is, it's just about Sami Zayn and his doubt and feeling like he is playing himself down at the opportunity he could be IC champion here. Listen, before the whole bloodline honorary member, honorary ooze stuff, do we not forget that Sami Zayn was an IC champion? Like he was here before. My thing is, this is him winning the, the build again. And, you know, he was the conspiracy theorist and all that. Like it was a weakened version of Sami Zayn. So now Sami Zayn wins this title again, but the significance is supposed to be that it's, he's taking the belt from Gunther. And that's the part I think is kind of missing from the whole, whole part of the whole night was that, yeah, Sami won it. Sami won it with his, for his son, for his wife, the feel good story. Okay, fine. You know, seeing Kevin, you know, pumping him up before he was, goes outside. He saw his kid and his wife before he goes inside and does the match. Gunther and hit, and you know, and Gunther and Sammy tear it up. Great match together. Like that was a really great match. No question there. I don't know if it was a level of Gunther and Sheamus from, you know, Clash of the Castle, but it was very good. I didn't think Gunther was, it was time for this now because Gunther could have just held on to that belt. And I thought it would have been more of a draw to see him take the belt to Europe and take it to Paris and take it to Berlin, but they don't want to do that. And that's on them for them to do that. But I just thought that would have been a good thing to have Gunther main event over there with that belt because I mean, him has been so strong. Now that's me nitpicking because Sami Zayn being IC champion, that's a good move. I can respect that booking decision. Got no problem there. But the one thing I will say is that, you know, yeah, well, after Kevin and Sammy dropped the belts, my thing was just like, okay, where are we going with them? Because Sammy was kind of like left off to the side and he was doing other things. They were still keeping him strong. You know, Shinsuke Nakamura was an opponent in a program. But for me, Sammy was kind of left a little bit off to the side. He was kind of not on the heater, not getting that push at the moment, but then he comes here and then the whole thing with Chad Gable doing the training. Okay. So they're setting up the point that Sammy and Chad are going to take on each other. The bottom line is they don't want Chad Gable to be Gunther. They don't want Chad Gable to be the champion off of this. Okay. That's fine. So what are we going to do now? If Sammy's winning, obviously they're going to go with Sammy and Chad. Where does Gunther go from here? I think with Gunther losing here, I don't know if it matters for him to go after the build again. I want something where Gunther moves up to the main event picture. I want him in that world heavyweight title picture. Now, here's the other thing you could do. So let's say Damian Priest does not cash in the briefcase or un unsuccessfully cashes in the briefcase and does not win the world heavyweight title. And let's say that Drew McIntyre flat out beats Seth Rollins because of the injury tomorrow night. Then for me, what I would say is then give me Gunther and Drew. We haven't had that matchup yet. Give me that program for the world heavyweight title in Europe and give me that for a few months. And I will love that. I think those two giving us, you know, the European strong style. That's a great feud right there. That has not been touched yet. I want that feud. <coughs> but then again, when does CM Punk come back? Because there's the other thing. Because like Drew McIntyre, I think by him winning the title, there's a lot of reasons we could say that Drew McIntyre has a lot of contenders to go up against if he wins. 
And, you know, my, my, my feeling is, I don't know if he wins. I think it's Damien that's going to cash in. But if Drew wins tomorrow, you have Seth can come back and rematch. You have Gunther and you got CM Punk. And like all those are potential opponents. And there's sure other names we could put in the mix, but I think that would be good. And the Cedric McIntyre have to go in with a pretty loaded list of contenders to go after for that World Heavyweight title. That's a good thing. And we can see that go on there and let's see what we can do with that. Okay. And I think that would be helpful, especially on the Raw roster. Like, let's get something there where the World Heavyweight title can also be, you know, made a, a focus again. Where it's not being put on the on the wayside because of where Seth has to go ever and try to support Cody. So I enjoyed Sammy and Gunther. That was great. That was a great match tonight. Second best match. And the third best match would have to be Rhea and Becky because I think I didn't understand why, you know, or Rhea and Becky, they gave it what maybe twenty minutes or so, twenty five minutes. Good match. Rhea Ripley is a star. They don't see Becky go back and 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 again. And I don't know if that's the point where I like where Becky's here at this. And by the way, isn't she still in her contract thing? Like, do we know yet if her contract is going to go ahead and be re-signed? Because there's just supposed to be a talk about that. Maybe that's not hasn't done yet. So we don't know yet. And so we can wait and see what goes on here and, and where we're going to get to it at some point. But great opener. Don't get me wrong. They had a hell of a match tonight. And, you know, they tried to put the fact, oh, well, you know, Becky Lynch is sick. And, you know, it's just, and then, then Rhea Ripley had her injury, but still, like, they definitely played it where Becky was, you know, the veteran playing smart on the moves, going after the left arm, playing that up hardcore. That was good. They did it right on that point. And, you know, I understand the fact that they want to go and keep the belt on her. That's fine. Okay. But what do you do with Becky Lynch next? This is something you got to think about. With some of the veteran women stars they have, what are you doing with them? I mean, that's the thing I got to think about. Like, we're Becky and Bailey. Like, what are we doing? Like, okay, let's see what Bailey does with Eoskai tomorrow. I don't know if Bailey wins tomorrow. But, you know, they have some women of that women's revolution that are not really put anywhere and doing anything at the moment. With Becky and then Charlotte's been away for a while. And, you know, they have quite a few women that they're obviously going to put some more emphasis on other women up front of them. And what are they going to be doing? Like that's, you know, no necessarily plans as to what they're going to have with programs to go on, go forward with that. Now, the thing too is there's also about the way the matches were booked tonight. The, the way the, it was interesting kind of did it. So obviously, okay, listen, right. Re- and Beckley to, to start off with the women's world title. Fine with me. You could have gone with the ladder match. I figured they can go out for like kind of easy with that. It was 17 minutes for Rhea and Becky. They gave him quite a bit of time. 17 minutes for the ladder match. Undisputed WWE Tag Team titles. Okay. The only thing I liked about this match at all was that we don't have undisputed champions anymore. Split them up. Fine. That, that, that works for me. And they said, okay, Awesome Truth takes the Raw Tag Team titles. Right? Or they, they take the SmackDown Tag Team titles, right? No, 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 no. Um... Excuse me, Austin Theory, Grayson Waller, SmackDown Tag Team Champions, Awesome Truth, Raw Tag Team Champions. Split. Okay, nothing else. That, that's the only thing. Okay, that's newsworthy for that. Does it matter who's a Tag Team Champions? No, it's just filler for TV. It's just a TV belt to me. I don't think it makes much of a difference. I mean, the fact is you had to make it a ladder match. You made it a ladder match because this kind of takes the way of like, well, we don't have money in the bank ladder match, which used to be our customary in WrestleMania. So let's make a ladder match here. And it works. That's fine. That worked for what they wanted to do here. No problem. And they had three matches that didn't necessarily need to be here. And let me tell you why. Because they were all spun up very quickly. And the idea is, oh, well, you know, With two of those matches, well, we could just kind of reheat some feuds we had from earlier before. No, no, you just can't do that. You just can't expect, oh, let's let's do something where we can get Dom and Ray against each other again and stir that family feud together. You just can't do that. You just can't do that. You got to keep it consistent. So, you know, Dominic has been going off doing Judgment Day stuff for a while now. It doesn't matter. 
and all of a sudden he goes into LWO he goes into the LWO business because of Santos Escobar makes sense but you could have you could have you could have planted that seed much earlier before you had a lot of time for that not to mention the God of the Fantasma just kind of like got put back together at all and they go whatever and that's the part where like eh you know and like out of the Fantasma you know Escobar decides to get a couple other people together with Garza, Los Lotharios, right? <laughs> and Electra Lopez. So, like, this is new new setup here. Just think of the LWO, look out of the Fantasma setup, whatever. I mean, it's just something for TV. Like, for this to be on WrestleMania, didn't need to be. This could be a pay per view match somewhere, but not a WrestleMania match. This was put together hastily. And sure, it was, you know, with Ray and Andrade. Now, the other thing, too, was it wasn't it Dragon Lee that was originally going to be in this match? And then Andrade got switched over because Andrade, we thought, was going to be with Legato, but that didn't happen. So other people looks much stronger because of who they have on their side. No matter what, if you were going to have the match, Andrade with Rey Mysterio, that's a better team you want to watch. Them going over, by the way, Andrade and Rey Mysterio, fantastic. Together. Let me tell you this, too. I believe Andrade and Rey Mysterio should be a team. They should be tag teaming and go after the titles. There's those guys looked so good together. They were so in tandem. Listen, I didn't think I would be so amazed by seeing, you know, a stack them up, you know, <laughs> jump off the rope, a, a plancha off the top rope with Ray Mysterio on Andrade's shoulders. They look really good. I don't know why I was so amazed by that, but it looked really good. It was just so simple too, but it looked effective. It just looked right. And those two just looked on all cylinders. Like that makes sense to me. So Andrade and Ray, yeah, I like that a lot. I, I think Andrade would have been better off if he was the leader over Santos Escobar's group. Because Santos Escobar is not the leader. Santos Escobar is good. But like I said, I've never liked him outside of the mask. Like this whole setup here with Legato and Fantasma, like that whole thing hasn't worked. I mean, Santos doesn't need the crew. And the way he's kind of presented, I just haven't liked it. And it's on the booking on WWE's part. It's what they want to do with him. I don't like it that much. It doesn't feel right with me. But I'm telling you, Ray and Andrade, make them a team in LWO. And, you know, you got me. I'm interested. I think those guys going after tag team titles right now over on the SmackDown side against Grayson Waller and Austin Theory. That sounds like fun to me. That's a good tag team. So let's do that. I would like that a lot. Fourth and fifth matches of the night. Completely disappointing. Jey Uso, Uso and Jimmy Uso. Look. You heated this back up two weeks before this match. It doesn't matter how great a promo or a package you put together about them and the bloodline whole thing you know, going over three years, right? I understand you kind of felt like, oh, we can get this in the bag. Like whenever we need to go and pull out Jimmy and Jay to feature each other, we can do this. You didn't give us that feud after the breakup. You didn't give us that. And instead we get here where Jimmy, Jay's been off doing main event, yeet stuff, whatever. And he's been off on his own. He's been tagging with Cody, got his tag team titles, and then he has this stuff he's going off for. And then, you know, they did tie in the whole steel. Listen, I mean, they tied in, listen, yes, screwing over Jay for the world title, for the universal title over Roman, screwing him against Gunther for the IC title. Got it. But it still doesn't matter. I mean, like, okay, so making Jay kind of go this route, and Jimmy's not going to like, you know, patch things up with Jay. Like if there was something where this match had a, a kind of a feeling of that, maybe there's some reconciliation with these two and that Jimmy might look to get away from bloodline and reunite with Jay. Maybe you can sell me on that, but they didn't want to go that route. They just wanted to play the fact that, Oh, well, Jimmy, you know, that the Jay is like, he feels bad for his brother because he doesn't want to be apart from him. He wants him also to be away from Roman because of the influence. They didn't kind of tell that story. Well, this match to give it 11 minutes was really bad. Like, come on, you're going to give this match here 
when the truth is, Jimmy and Jake, if you could have done it right, you could have made him a pay-per-view with him and not have Roman to go and work a, a title match. You can have these guys work a, a match for themselves and do something. But this was really spun up at the last minute. They needed to stack up the rest of the card. They put this together the last minute. This was rushed. And you just can't heat the storyline back up like it's a microwave. You just can't do that. This is something where, oh, well, we can come back to this whenever. And it doesn't work that way. That is a mistake. I will tell you this. I don't think any way whatsoever we would see Jay and Jimmy in a match like this if Vince was booking it. Because I don't think Vince would have booked. I think Vince would have booked Rhea and Becky. I think Vince would have booked. I don't think that. I think those two, two tag team matches, the undisputed tag team title match, eh, maybe. But Jay and Jimmy like this, this was an afterthought. And that's a shame for both of them because they're so damn talented. Come on. These are two of your guys that if you really wanted to, if you really wanted to, you could have them main eventing right now. I mean, to be honest with you, when you think about the World Heavyweight title, I mean, if I'm talking about Drew having Seth Rollins or Gunther or CM Punk, he has Jimmy Uso. You got to add him into the mix in the world title picture. Like he's in there. And then for Jimmy, well, Jimmy's kind of just still with the bloodline. It's like, well, you know, this was like Jimmy on his own with Solo. And no Solo out here, by the way, with him tonight. Like Solo was just kind of in the backdrop. I'm like, okay, well, I'm not sure what I think about that. But Jimmy's in the backdrop with the bloodline, not really dealing with anybody else. It wasn't like Roman summoned Jimmy to go after Jay. It's like there was just this one thing here. Now, what does this mean for Jimmy when he goes back to the bloodline and says, hey, you couldn't beat your little brother? And that's the part. Like, you know, I guess you could play into that. But this is the WrestleMania storyline that you wanted to start off with with that. Like, it, So Jimmy looks like a fool. Jay wins, sure. But you didn't do anything with this match at all. But I think the match that might have been even worse tonight in terms of, I don't know why they decided to go ahead and rush Bianca Belair, Jay Cargill, and Naomi together. Eight-minute match with damage control. It's nothing. The only thing I was expecting to have something come out of this was Jay Cargill maybe do a turn. I don't like her as a face. To have her come in as a face doesn't feel right to me. I think you start her as a heel and then make her a face. Like, she should start off as a heel. She naturally has the look of like, yeah, She's better than you. And she knows it. Like I, I would prefer her to be vain and to be narcissistic and to go out there and just make everybody else look like a fool. Because she looks like a, she's an Adonis, but she's a specimen here. They haven't booked her right at all. I know, I know that Jade Cargo felt like she needed to get over here. She's 31 years old. She said in her reports and in, in interviews, I want to be with an established company. All right, fine. The interest that she kind of gets is in a way what she had in AEW. So like it's already kind of like set. Probably with her own input, but either which way. To just put these three together, just to put them on the card. I don't know. I'm sorry. Bianca, Jade, and Naomi individually should have their own set programs. They shouldn't be just pushed together. Like this is no different than when they tagged Naomi and Sasha Banks before. Like when you think about it, in the women's division, these are all three content. Well, maybe not Jade yet because the way they have booked her has been wrong. But Naomi, Bianca Belair are absolutely contenders that, you know, being over on the Raw side after Becky Lynch drops, loses to Rhea Ripley, these are the two that should be contenders going after Rhea Ripley. But they're not. But they decided to put this match together. Damage control is mostly over on the other side. And it's like, yeah. And it just don't matter. I mean, listen, and it's also those are the you know the, the tag team champions, right? Kabuki Warriors? And then they lost like that. I was like, what a waste of that match. Because they didn't get any time to do anything else either. It was just a rushed match. Badly booked in the middle of the card. 
like Andra, Ray and Mysterio and Andrade, like they get only 11 minutes in this and then they had everything else. You could have just had one more match to put in there. So like, if you didn't have that, then you could have just taken, honestly, Rhea and Becky, the tag team match, you could have made that a pre-show match, to be honest. You could have taken Sam and Gunther and then the Bloodline tag team match. It basically could have been another night. That could have been the, the same night on Sunday, except for the fact that Bloodline match, you would have done something else. But could you have just put that all together? Because even tomorrow, there's filler on the card. When I look at it, there's filler on the card tomorrow. Because for me, it's like, all right, Philadelphia Street Fight, LA, style, LA, LA Knight, AJ Styles, that is filler. That is absolute filler tomorrow. And it doesn't matter. We just got to move on with something else. But they have their own choices. Okay, fine. They'll do it. It's whatever it is. But those two matches don't matter to me. I mean, you even built them up. Yeah, Pride in the Testament, sure. You've built the Pride and Final Testament. You built that up, but you already had them in a match. So now we're going to escalate it to this. Like, they didn't even get even on a pay per view yet. You put them on TV, and now you're going to put this match all of a sudden on WrestleMania Sunday? Whew. That's crazy. Like, you didn't even give it a chance to be on pay per view in the first place. I mean, the first time they go on pay per view, they're going to go ahead and do it on WrestleMania. That's wild. I don't think you're going to put it here. I don't, it doesn't make sense to me to do that here. And LA Knight, JJ Styles, yeah, we can build back up because of the whole, you know, US title tournament, sure. But it's like, have they really done that much to really build that storyline either? I don't know. I don't see anything much with LA Knight and AJ Styles. I mean, yeah, whatever. It's like what they got. So you could have done one night with all the show, with all the matches they had. But they basically have what, five matches that did not necessarily need to be on WrestleMania. Tomorrow is a better card overall. But, yeah, I mean, preview tomorrow, if I'm going to go with where I'm at right now, I still will go with the fact that I believe Damian Priest is somehow going to be champion at the end of WrestleMania Sunday with the World Heavyweight title in his hand. I think he gets that belt. So now, not worry so much about the tag team belts, but I think Damian coming out as World Heavyweight Champion and Rhea coming out of, the, out of her matches, Women's World Champion, yeah, that makes sense to me. That 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 makes makes me feel like we're gonna see that Women's World Title, Rhea, and then Judgment Day will continue to be dominant, and then that briefcase is already done. I'll take. It doesn't even matter about Pride and Final Testament. I'm gonna go with the Pride. Because it doesn't matter. You know, I don't like that Bobby Lashley and Karrion Cross have to be put in factions. I mean, listen, Bobby wasn't a factual fight with Hurt Business, and we like that. But Bobby doesn't need to be in another faction. I don't believe that. I don't think Street Profits don't need to be necessarily with him either. I don't feel like I've gotten much out of that altogether. And I'll be fast with him. It's like, well, you know, because she lost, you know, hit row. And final testament. Okay, so Karrion Cross has his has his his thugs with him. And I'm like, eh. But I don't have much to say about that match. I'm guessing the Pride will win. I'm thinking it looks like be Alien Alien Knight over AJ Styles. Don't really matter about that match. And then the three matches prior to close of the night. I'm guessing U S title, Logan Paul. I'll still take Randy Orton to win the U S title tomorrow. I will take Bailey over EO sky for the women's world women's championship. And I think Bailey finally gets her comeuppance and that's her way of, you know, successfully getting revenge and avenging the loss of damage control. I think that's where you go with that there. I mean, EO Sky's promo leading up to the match saying about why Damage Control dumped her like they did. I mean, that's fine as well. That was a good job putting it, but it took a long time to get over here. Like, okay, we get the whole story and they do it, but it's like you kind of like take your foot off the gas sometimes in some of these storylines when you need to keep the heat going. You need to keep the heat burning on it. It's like you got to put a flame on it. It's got to stay hot and that's something that I don't feel like the creative team right now does a lot of. 
That's where I'm coming from with that. And I do believe that Cody wins over Roman Reigns. And I think Roman Reigns takes some time off. I think The Rock screws something up. And The Rock and Roman are going to have a falling out tomorrow. And I think then down the line, Rock and Roman will face each other maybe next year's WrestleMania or maybe another show. But I think Rock and Roman, we're going to have a match with each other. And maybe if it's not in a WrestleMania, I think you do it in Saudi Arabia. Crown Jewel, something like that. I do believe that. Think of the spectacle, huh? That's where I think things will go with that. But that's where I'm looking at it. I'm sure tomorrow night will be a better night than tonight. But, you know, a couple of good takeaways from the matches. I can appreciate that. So we're going to keep it at a half hour. We're not going to go more than that. Come back tomorrow. Of course, you know, if you need to hear anything about what I've talked about leading up to WrestleMania, like just keep it in the spine too. Like the last month or so of my program, if you're just listening right now and you've been looking for recaps, on my program, the Wrestling Consort Podcast, the last three, four weeks, I really have been talking about what goes on after WrestleMania. The prognosticating as to what this company needs to do so that they can go ahead and overcome the withdrawal of the WrestleMania offseason that starts Monday. So who knows what they're going to do with Raw after WrestleMania? I'm not worried about that. Usually I've not been very impressed. We're not getting that the, the hype of Raw after WrestleMania always comes upon us, but it's not been coming up as much as I expected. I don't think any we're getting debuts or anybody coming back from injury. That's really going to be standing out. Maybe I'm wrong, but I just feel like that's where we are. But I'm looking at what they're going to do after this. So I spent a lot of time on that on previous episodes. So please make sure to go and listen to those, you know, and also look for another post show where we talk about WrestleMania Sunday tomorrow here on the program. So I'll come back. I will say this about Supercard of Honor. I did watch it. Earlier tonight, I did not watch Stand of the Liver. Didn't catch that. And I didn't look at it. So, okay, Trick beats Carmelo. Ilya Dragunov beats Tony D'Angelo. Retains the NXT title. Roxanne Perez wins the NXT women's title. I was expecting that. And then Oba Femi retains the triple, in a triple, triple threat match for the NXT North American Championship. And that's the only matches I really paid attention to, pretty much. And I guess all the NFC tag team titles, Braun and and Baron beat Axiom and Nathan Frazier. Right. So not much. I'm missing off of that. Not to me anyway. And like I said, as for Supercard of Honor, congratulations to Mark Briscoe becoming the new Ring of Honor World Champion. I thought it was a very sweet moment for him. 13 years after his brother Jay won it. I remember that. And I thought, well, was it Jay Lethal he beat for that title with a Jay Driller? And had a long run as champion, which was really great. I also must say that Athena looks so solid. She has been booked so well on that show that she's really one of the stand. It's been a standout for Ring of Honor. I like her on this brand. I really can't figure out what they're trying to do with this brand in general and how they kind of book them. But, you know, there are certain AW mainstays they had that just kind of like, we're going to just bring you down over here to Ring of Honor. They are like the AAA farm system like they are better than developmental but they're like on the outside they can come back up i think the fact that eddie kingston drops the continental crown and he also dropped the ring of honor world title last on friday night i think that says something about that eddie i don't know if it's gonna be some time off or going out to new japan to work over there or if he's going to be essentially going to AEW much more prominent and doing something more there and going after the world title in that point, which they could very well do. And I can see some where, depending on what they decide to do with Samoa Joe and Spurs Strickland in a couple weeks, we can see them with that. And other than that, I thought Queen Anamata looked really good. They had the Ring of Honor World Television title bet match. Queen Anamata looked really good in a match with Billy Starks. Billy Starks, young but very well done in this match. And just that was really impressed by that match too, from what I saw. And other than that, that was pretty much all I saw of, of what I was looking at. So those are the matches I looked at and paid attention to the most. So Mark Briscoe winning. That was cool. I like that. That was really cool. That's the rest of the podcast for tonight. Night one of WrestleMania. That's your recap. Come back tomorrow for night two in about 24 hours for another rest of podcast because wrestling needs us.